Greetings in the name of the Most High, the demons. Uh, that's one topic that uh, really cannot ever, ever um, be over-presented because, you see, spirits, good and bad, I mean, obviously, God has control over all spirits and the only being that does. Jesus has authority over heaven and hell and all spirits. And that includes the demonic, that name, Jesus. Yeshua, Yahushua, blah, 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 you know, that name. That name isn't the name. Whatever we utter with our lips is not exactly the name. It's just it's the meaning of the name. Uh, so these demons, you know, it's not really a matter of casting out because, see, one thing about demons that I know from having dealt with this, uh, having a demonic uh, household growing up and uh, seeing things and seeing things in the hall, on the ceiling, and um, just a constant a constant barrage of the demonic. Because you see what happens, and, and you know, what happens in, in, in the Bible. Let me just get to... Uh, I have some notes here about... Uh, demons in the Bible, like in the Old Testament. Um, there's a demonology, but the, the 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 whole point is of say the Old Testament is don't don't get involved in conjuring demons. Now, the whole point of conjuring demons is to do magic, to have power, or even to have protection against evil spirits. Someone would conjure, say, a familiar demon, and um, the, it, you know, they're, they're um, um, <clears throat> it's interesting how in the Old Testament there's no uh, incantations, there's no amulets prescribed for getting rid of protection from spirits, there's none of that. God has the authority. Now, uh, it, it, God is said to have complete authority over the spirits, well, he does, which cannot operate in the world without his approval. If a lying spirit goes out, it's only with divine consent. With divine consent, and that's coming from 1 Kings 22, 23, and Job 1 and 2. The main concern of the Old Testament writers was that the people seeking to avail themselves of magical powers through contact with spirits. Uh, the people, I'm sorry, avoid seeking to avail themselves of magical powers through contacting of spirits. How Solomon lost his kingdom. In fact, I would just say that the Old Testament is almost a lesson of what happens when demons take over and a big cautionary note not to go into anything that conjures these things, especially not practicing any kind of magic whatsoever because that, that is demonic Demons are summoned. Powers are summoned. People give consent to be possessed through any number of, of sin portals. Right? Sin opens doors for the demonic to take hold. So someone conjuring demons for power and magical power would use sin as a almost like a uh, scientific ritual. You know, whatever, sexual sin, whatever, the, you know, that's a favorite because it's it's conjuring up power and opening doors, right? Any kind of defiling of the flesh, right? That is, is you know, death, certainly, um, murder. Rituals involving human sacrifice are murders, okay? Around um, murders, there are demons that can lurk there for hundreds of years, there are generational curses around murders that can plague a family indefinitely until it's extinct. So the entire, the entire word of God is arrayed against people doing any... I mean, we hear about sacrifices to Molech, and we hear about the sons of Belial, we hear about uh, witches and conjuring spirits, we hear about Saul and his, um, uh, you, you know, uh, conjuring um, through... Um, trying to conjure the dead, and then David trying to soothe 
uh, King Saul with the uh, with the harp, trying to you know, use the harp in those frequencies to cast out those demons to give Saul some peace. Because once he called upon those spirits, he was utterly possessed. And when, uh, one sign of possession is uncontrollable mental illness, uncontrollable um, uh, uh, sickness and pain and suffering that happens to people that get uh, that get attacked. So they might start by doing some kind of ritual to try to get ahead in life, and then the backlash becomes, well, the professionals, what they do with the backlash is they throw the backlash onto others, unsuspecting innocent ones. So they, have, they make sure that in their rituals that, that, uh, that because they understand that every, every move that they make toward the demonic will have an equal or even greater backlash against them. So before they even start, they have to have a way of off-putting that backlash to others, right, by, by either casting a spell of, you know, sickness any kind of discomfort of the flesh on others as, as to get credit for that with daddy so that um, the backlash doesn't hit them. Then, now, these are professional witches. These are like the, you know, generational, you know, witches, witch doctors, wizards, sorcerers, you know, conjurers, they all know that when they conjure and they, they put something into motion, there's an equal, like I say, an equal backlash. So that's taken care of before they even start, or they wouldn't do it. But people that don't know anything, who just think they're going to conjure a demon, and they don't know anything about this uh, particular science, uh, may stumble into doing it and not realize there's a backlash, and then, of course, be forever cursed by their own hand because they made a mistake. You know, the remedy for that, of course, is, is you know, is obviously repentance and, and, and Christ because Jesus, in, in the new, in our modern era, Jesus is the only one that has the authority over the demonic realm, has the keys uh, of, of, of life, but also the keys of hell and death. It's only... <clears throat> Under that name. So most people that, you know, are possessed, like I say, as long as they're going along with the program, they're not going to have bad. Um, now, this is not for conjurers. This, these are for pe- just everyday people get through their free will. They allow a demonic spirit to take hold and run their family because they think that's a way to make money or to have security. And nobody really talks about it, you know what I mean? It's it's just one of those things. But um, the the problem, of course, is unabated. Of course, that will destroy said family. The whole purpose of these demons is to destroy humanity, all of it. So when you look at the people that want to destroy humanity and have a post-human world, you get an idea of how many possessed, how many people are actually possessed. That means they are not in control of their lives. You know, it's a runaway train. But they join it out of the promise that they can, you know, have social acceptance and, and you know, some pathway to a career or to something. You know, you know, the Faustian bargain. <laughs> Fork that thing over and, you know, give that thing to me and then you can do what you want. And um, consent comes in many forms. Sometimes it comes through, you know, someone obviously that murders for a gang would be, you know, possessed, uh, people that uh, do some kind of ritual or do some kind of self-corruption, defilement, lying, sex, some form of, you know, whatever, <clears throat> whatever the group wants. And then, of course, then they, uh, they become one of them for life. These are the possessed. They become part of the collective, the hive mind. And then they discover, once they're in that, that everyone's doing magic, everyone's conjuring demons, demons are everywhere. So they try to send the demons toward people they don't like or their enemies as a way to offset it from themselves. Here's the bird coming in. Um, so, you know, um, 
Jesus alone, and, and if you go to Luke uh, 441, has absolute power over them all. And it's a matter of, um, you know, divine authority and not magic or sorcery. Jesus has the power and it's the only power. Otherwise, the world continues on the way it is. Like I say, most people have at least some kind of um, traditional spirit, some traditional possession, right? And as long as they don't really rock the boat or do anything, you know, rebellious, they'll they'll be left alone. But they'll be, as Father Malachi Martin said on the Art Bell Show so many years ago, he said it perfectly, these are the perfectly possessed. This is modern society. They, <laughs> As long as they have their you know, 2.5 kids and their two cars in the drive and a, you know, and, and something to eat, whatever, they'll, they'll, they'll just stay the course. Oh, I, yeah, I heard about, they retire, they have barbecues, so one day they die and they, they make, they make it look like it's a normal life. It's a sales pitch. And, um, it's not, they, they, they pitch this kind of thing also in like music and, they're always trying to pitch, you know, kind of be nod, wink, you know, clever with their dual entendre lyrics and things, trying to make it look like this wonderful thing. But they don't talk about it openly in society or on the Internet or anything because uh, people get killed. I, I would say, you know, there's a lot of people I've seen that, that feel like they're targeted that, that have demons that need deliverance. But I've seen people that feel targeted also who are just uh, realizing this situation because they realize the targeting goes on no matter what state you're in or country. You could go to four countries in one day and it would be on you like, you know what, you know, stink on you know what. It would be on you every every step of the way. And um, so getting away from it, is you know it's you know the bartender that pops up it's the you know the 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 guy at the hotel it's the car rental place it's it's you know just you just can't seem to get away from it and um most of the time the reason that is is because uh they're openly attacking um and trying to offset their own sin on you and use you as a scapegoat no, it's not to reel you in and become one of them. They don't want more of them. A lot. They just need sca- they need innocent ones to put the you know to to, to carry the load. It's really um, a terrible situation. This earth, terrible. And uh, a lot of people try to put a you know positive uh, outlook. I do, you know, have a positive outlook about it. And you know, certainly with Jesus, there's a positive outlook. But um, they don't, they, they, you know, the people are tortured. And oftentimes people, you know, when they get older, they, they wonder and they worry, what have they done? What was this life about? Am I going to be judged? Well, is, is God mad at me and all that? And they, they fret for the second half of their lives and wring their hands and oftentimes come down with terrible diseases and dementia and different things because... Um, it, it eats away at them, the decision they made, the murder they got away with, the thing they did. Hasn't it worn off? It's like, no, if, that, if you've done that thing, then you need deliverance. Uh, the perfectly possessed fill the churches worldwide. They all, they're very big churchgoers. They're big on society, any kind of society icon, church, schools, degrees, clubs, secret societies. They, they, they fill, they fill these places. They're attracted to these places because it makes them feel better about, uh, you know, breathing. But it can't take away the bitter, ugly truth that something happened something they don't want to discuss and something that's killing them and something that if not taken care of will literally kill them and make them as if they never were in the first place. And that's the problem here. See, here, this dimension 
is, as it's been said many times, it is somewhat of a test. It's a test of faith. It's a test of alignment. Really, in, in, if you really want to, you know, have a good metaphor, it'd be like we're vegetables in a garden that God is growing. And the ones that get possessed, i.e. disease, when if you're possessed, you're diseased. If you're possessed in any way, you go, well, the demons haven't really bothered me. Yes, but you're possessed anyway. So, you, you know, just try to rebel some and see what happens then. Big manifestation. Army of demons after you. Um, the demonic realm would like us to all just kill each other, not have a peaceful country. The, the upshot of it is you're not joining society and joining a club where everybody cheers you on because they had to all be silent. Now they can, you know, be cool with you. That's not it. They're all in trouble. And, you know, to them, the trouble that they're in, they, they, fig, they figure, well, the more numbers they get, the more people they corrupt. And that's what it is. A corrupted human is not in possession of his own soul and not in possession of his own destiny. He's little more than a backseat driver in a grand plan of destruction. That's why I sit here promoting Jesus. <laughs> because that's the default position of being born here. There is no man, no woman, no child even that walks around on their own recognizance, free as a bird, does not exist here, never has and never will, unless God changes it. So far, that's not happening. Humans born are then prey to these spirits. These spirits sometimes possess entire neighborhoods, you know, or entire cities like Los Angeles is run by these spirits. They say, well, how could they do that in Hollywood? Because it's, it's you're not looking at it right. You have to back up and look at it. The whole thing is regulated by this, these spiritual entities that are running things here because people comply so they can have a Life, <laughs> a life. Think about that for a minute, a life. Who has a life? No man, woman, even child walks around here on their own recognizance. It's either the Christ road or the other. So that would mean that people say, well, there's possession here. That one needs to be delivered. That one over there. No. The world is a blanket of demonic possession, and the exception would be those who are free by the power of the living God. Otherwise, there are no atheists here. No such thing. The word atheism itself means God exists. I'll explain that because if you deny God, you 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 underscore His existence. So anyone that says a theist, a non-theist, um, says actually what they say is theist because the opposite proves the opposite. So um, that's the ontological argument. Cannot be that argument cannot be broken by anyone, and never has been, and never will be. You might as well stop. A lot brighter people than me have already taken that argument on. And the argument answers itself. Atheist or theist, you know, God or, you know, a God, a agnostic, a this, a that, doesn't mean denial. It just proves it exists. And what it means is that it exists, but you deny it. Something exists that I deny. I know it exists, but I deny it anyway. That's what our language does for us. You're not off the hook. Now, there are people that think 
many people, perhaps billions of people, think they're in control, think they're, they're leading their own lives. When, when they really get down to think about it, every single thing about them is programmed and pre-programmed from when they were children. None of the things they're doing are things they actually wanted to do. This is the beginning of wisdom. This is the beginning of understanding. The next part of that, of course, is understanding God exists and fearing God. That is the beginning of wisdom because fear the one who can, who can eliminate your soul. Right? Don't simply fear the one that can, you know, eliminate your flesh. You f- f- fear the one that can eliminate your soul. In other words, make you as if you never were. That's something that people don't like to discuss that. They keep thinking they're going to go to hell. They don't think they'll be negated as if they never were. That, that's a concept that's very hard for people to, to really get their mind around. If, if that's the way it is, a lot of people would probably repent today if they knew that. So you repent, you know, you, you, you finally say, well, you know, I want to do what my flesh wants to do. And I want to have that, you know, the sports car and the girl and everybody like bowing down to me and kissing my ass and all that. And have a great reputation and plaques on the wall and just have a charmed life. There is no such thing. There are people that are godly people that are having these charmed lives too, though. See, I mean, that's, that's the kicker. It isn't this... They fool you into thinking there's this one way to do it, the Faustian bargain. That's not true. Oh, they get mad at those people. If, if somebody can, uh, you know, find some way to live without, you know, losing their soul. But just think about this for a minute. If you lose your soul, you have no life. So whatever you do, whatever fun things you do, or whatever you come up with to do, it doesn't really count. Right? It's not really you. You're not there to enjoy it. And a lot of people fret about these things quietly because they never talk about them. Nobody talks about this. Because they don't want you to think the entire world is, you know, what it is. They don't want you to think that. They don't want you to think that, you know... um, the entire world is what it is, and God has power over all spirits, good or evil, period. People tend to think, when they think that, they get mad at God. How could you let me? No, it's the real question, if you want to get mad at God, I've got it for you. The real question is, how could you let me be born here? There's no freedom here. I don't get to do what I want. There is no I anymore. There's no I want because that's been beaten out of me. Now, what do I do? Yeah, you're you're here at the uh, behest and pleasure of somebody else. So it's either going to be, you know, the Christ road or it's going to be somebody else has got your ticket. And you're doing for them, thinking you're doing for yourself. But nothing could be further from the truth and, and... Everyone seems to know it, but they keep going down that road because it seems safe. Believe me, friends, that road is the most dangerous road there is. Compliance. Can you imagine when people get together and pray, though, a lot of these chains break. People get insights. They get insights. They get they get knowledge. They start to understand. I mean, the one thing that, that the child of God needs to understand is this. You know, the, 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 power, the power of Christ is sufficient for, you know, for everything. So there is no need to worry. The only real worry there is is how many people are throwing their lives away because they don't understand the equation. They don't understand uh, the, the, the binary situation we are in. They don't understand their birth. They, don't, they think they're trying to find themselves. There is no such thing. Find yourself. How are you going to do that? I want to be an astronaut. That's my dream since I was a child. Oh, nice. Nice implant. They'll implant anything as long as it isn't. Yeah, 
I figured out that, you know, this is the, the whole God thing. I just want to run into, into God's arms. I just want to be there and be an extension of his will. They don't, that's the one thing they don't want. Astronauts fine. Fireman is fine. You know, rock star is fine. All that, everything is fine, but not that. Don't do that. For gosh sakes, don't do that. You know, plus people want to win the game. <laughs> they want to win. And I understand that. I mean, you know, um, I think if you run a race, you know, and, and you know, remember the, the, the movie Chariots of Fire, the old classic with that Van Gellis uh, synthesizer track won awards. Bom, 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 bom. Remember that? And the guy goes, you know, God made me fast. And when I run real fast, I feel his pleasure. Ta-da! Yeah. Perfect. Now there's a man that is, you know, living for God, obviously, but he loves to run fast and win races, and God loves it too. But they got mad at him because he wouldn't run on Sunday. For him, that was his Sabbath. He wouldn't violate it because God came first. And they got mad. They, he's not going to be down at the bar getting drunk. And he's not going to be participating in the uh, the blue, blue, hoodoo, voodoo, all the whatever kind of conjuring sessions they have. The seesaw guys that I do for you, you do for me. We, we go up the ladder. No, you don't go up the ladder. You go down. To hell. You'll see eventually. Once you get out of your 20s and get out of your 30s and you start getting down the road, you start asking these questions. What the hell is this all about? What was it for? It's not really for us. It's not really about us. But basically the world is run by witchcraft and demons all under a very organized hierarchy. The bird's not coming in, Trish. Yeah, it, it, it did. It was just on its nest. Okay. We're trying to get these birds. we got some hatch, hatchlings. And the mama, mama, see, because Dasha's is over there. That's why. Bring Dasha. She wouldn't go over there because of Dasha. Bring her in. She, she has Eli's fine, but Dasha yeah. won't. Uh, no, that's. <clears throat> I got really depressed. We're trying to get these hatchlings, you know, their wings, and then of course it's fun to watch them take their first flight, right? I love that. So we're trying to protect these birds. One, one winter we had all the swallows, a bunch of them. They build vertical nests on the wall. And we had the, like a ton of babies all of a sudden flying. And they're doing flight practice all around, staying in the yard, staying in the yard a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom, they were gone. It was so awesome to be a part of that. Uh, anyway, so, and I know people love to win, especially in America. The America's got like a, uh, a competitive spirit, right? And you look at and and there's nothing wrong with that. It's I'm not even suggesting anyone give give anything up whatsoever. I'm just simply putting it that you know you you when you're born. It's like you're never alone here. Um, but there's a million ways these demons can can get you, you know, and, and even, you know, even like Bob, the Bob Dylan song, you're going to serve somebody. Okay. That's all my point. It's ancient, ancient wisdom here. There's nothing new coming from me. I'm just simply warning because I see so much possession out there right now. And, uh, if you, those of you who wish to cast demons out of people who are willing to repent and willing to change course and, and, uh, you know, the, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, you know, and take up that, uh, you know, extend their free will to God rather than uh, the world or the, the, the earth or the, the devil or whatever. Um, 
It's, it's just done in Jesus' name. Most of the time, the demons actually talk to me, unfortunately. <laughs> it's almost like the people are put to sleep. And then the, the thing that's in there goes, ah, do you need Jesus to save you? This happened next door. Do you need Jesus to save you? It was just like the exorcist coming out of an old woman. And the answer is yes, of course. But that demon just he just chomped on me all night, couldn't do anything because she didn't want to lose it. I found people that hold on to their demons for dear life. Well, it becomes familiar to them, but I mean, you know, it's like, okay, let's say, uh, you know, some it's not their fault. I mean, I'm aware of some that have held on to these things since childhood, but then they've done all kinds of conjuring and black magic and stuff, and so they have a big seven-headed hydra demon, you know, a big... Like if you try to cast it out, it's going to take several grown men to hold down that person because they may, you know, the, the, the powers in getting, dislodging something like that, it, it, it's, it's, it's cosmic. It, you know, creates atmosphere, wind, noise, poltergeist, all, all kinds of stuff. But that's what goes on here. Upon, if you're on Earth, that's what's going on. And, and people say, oh, nonsense, I've been very happily in my career, and I went to school, and I did this, and I did that. I had my children. They moved away. I retired. I'm living on an island now. I, I love everything. I'm having a great time. I'm a happy person. What are you talking about? Now, I've met people like that. Not many. And, you know, the answer to someone like that may be, well, they may already have a relationship with God anyway. It may not, it, it may not be... Something I would recognize, but, um, you know, I've seen people that seem perfectly happy. Or when I say happy, what I mean is free, unfettered. Usually, though, when I watch people that say they're free and unfettered and happy, I, I don't know, for some reason, the Lord always lets me see the dark side of that person. In other words, they lie. They lie about how happy they are. They lie about feeling so... Um, comfortable in their skin. They lie about how well everything's gone. There's something else going on. They're not being honest with themselves. They're putting on some sort of act for the world as if you know, to, to convince somebody. And, um, you know, it's not a big deal to need help. To be going, you know, I hey, you know, hey, uh, Zeph, I don't know what this thing is. I, I don't understand. I, I thought it was this, but not, I'm not sure what it is. Well, it is It is what it is. It is, you know, you're either going to be possessed by demons or you're going to walk free in Christ, but you're not going to walk around on your own. I mean, you, you know that. And and the demon that has a grip on you, you don't really feel like you're, you still feel you're in the driver's seat. You still feel like it's your life. But then you're starting to question, you're starting to go, you know, is it really... Did I really make that choice? Is this, you know, it's like the talking head song. Is that really my wife? Is that my house? Is, you know, and they start realizing that no, none of that is really their own doing. It, it's, you know, there's programming there that needs to be broken if that person's going to, you know, it's like a bird in a cage, right? I go way back. So I have the old song, White Bird. Remember that? White Bird's in a Golden Cage. And no matter how gilded that cage is, no matter how beautiful that cage is, that bird must fly or die, right? And how's that bird going to get out? The bird of its own can't escape the cage. Only God can set that bird free, you see? And no matter how much gold is, is layered and layered and layered, you know, 24-karat gold cage, bejeweled with emeralds and rubies and diamonds, it doesn't really matter. It's still a gilded cage, you know, so just think about that when you see your people that keep parading around in front of you, sports figures, celebrities, these and that, as if they have exemplary lives, right? And take take a look at that and then then for, for a moment just think gilded cage. Right? They're slaves in a gilded cage. And if they if they try to do their own thing or do something they want to do, usually they get killed. They don't want them escaping those cages. They put a lot of money into those people to boost them up, to make money off of them. And if they decide to start doing their own thing, well, you've seen the long list of people, what happens to them, right? So 
And a lot of times you run into a situation, too, like where people think, well, this much corruption is okay. And um, a little light witchcraft is okay. I go to church 10,000 times a week, so I'm, I'm cool. I'm covered. And nothing could be further from the truth. There is no um, connection between any, any form of witchcraft, self-corruption, uh, sin of any kind, and, and God. There is there's absolutely no relationship there. The only relationship has got to be Jesus to be washed clean by the blood, the most expensive thing of all time, the blood. Pays for a contract, sets us free, obviously, uh, you know, free to walk uh, in Christ and, and not uh, of ourselves. Um, which ought to be a point of rejoicing, you know. Um, it should be a point of rejoicing, you know, but then they say, well, I want to go get naughty. And then therein becomes the problem. And everybody, you know, the, the word I have for people today is like everybody gets naughty. It just depends if you, are you, you know, wh where, where's your heart? Do you want to just be naughty? Is that it? Like, is that going to last for 100 years, naughty? No, no, you st stop bothering. Eli's just sitting there. I don't want you on that other thing over there because the bird's trying to feed her little ones. She just is always going to be like that, isn't she? No doggy doors here. We have a machine gun lined up on the on the on the uh, door, so if anyone opens it, they get. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if I had a doggy door, I'd have to have a shotgun lined up on the door, right? If anyone tried to come in, it trips a wire. Boom, you know, spaghettios. Uh, so. So, uh, you know, this particular binary truth has one thing in common. Now, let me go a little bit more into demons before I do that. There's one thing in common. Both sides, whether it be evil or good, demonic, or angelic spirits, whatever, both sides um, have one thing in common. Neither side is about the person. There's no place on earth that's about you or about me. We can play that, we can give each other awards and trophies and things, but it's not about us. You, you say, well, I want to do what I, I wilt, I would do what thou wilt, so I'm going to gratify myself and join Satan's side which doesn't exist, you know, at least not on the internet. And it's just kind of whispered around. But I'm going to join that side so I can do what I want. No such thing. There is no I there. It's not about you. It's, it, the recruitment has nothing. To, they, can, they can give you an illusion that you're doing your own thing, but you'll find that your own thing is just programming that was set there before to set you up for a fall, period. It's got nothing to do with you. One day you might actually have your own thoughts if God restores you, but right now you never have thought a thought that is your thought. You just want to get away from pain. You want to go toward pleasure. It's like, like amoebas. It makes sense, though. You know, it makes sense. I, I, I enjoy, you know, things like what gives me this. Well, do you have any pleasure? Yes, I have pleasure. You know, right now talking to you is my pleasure. And it's a uh, it's a pleasure that's in the now. It's not an expectant pleasure. It's not a pleasure behind me. It's not a pleasure in front of me. It's just a spontaneous now pleasure. So every time I'm in a spontaneous now, I have effulgent pleasure in just being able to, you know, experience the, the existence of God's, you know, world. See, when I see it, the, the fact that it's a created situation, I understand what it is. I'm not mad at God for that. It doesn't bother me that the Lord set this thing up this way. You know, that this is his plan, a plan of salvation for humanity. Based on free will, you know, in other words, take it or leave it, you have free will. Uh, 
it doesn't bother me that that's the setup. I've accepted that. You know, I've accepted and I just kind of live accordingly. I don't really, you know, I see that God's plans for me are better than anything that I could ever plan for myself. So I tend not to really, you know, buy into plans like, oh no, if this plan doesn't make it, I'm going to be brokenhearted. That just doesn't happen because I just say, well, what's God going to do? And it's just way more exciting. So I'd say the pleasure I have is tr- tremendously amplified. But then again, I was a person that was very troubled and depressed most of my life from, you know, the, the you know, not understanding betrayal, abuse, sexual abuse, um, psychological abuse, uh, demonic uh, activity, b- black magic, witchcraft, um, you know, murders, all kinds of things. Made me very sad and very depressed most of my young life. Uh, it just seemed that people kept sweeping everything under the rug because they, they, if they are quiet, they're going to get some pudding at the end of the day or something. You know, it's, it's just one big cover up. And that's not a place where a child can feel a sense of home and a sense of belonging and a sense of um, some kind of sense of satisfaction. The only satisfaction I get is knowing that I'm in, you know, that, that, that I belong to God. But I mean, knowing that, that I, I love the Lord. And that, you know, and I feel that love in response and, um, you know, in, in conjunction, like a flowing energy. And I decided to live there because there's no uh, strife there. But when I do get strife, I have to get in the prayer clause. I've got to let it pass. Like, I've got to, I know to be quiet. And to let it pass. I mean, this month is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And uh, the suicide date of my daughter is coming right up. And I'm doing pretty well, you know, d- despite the fact that I miss her terribly and I wish that didn't happen. And I see so many other people now I've met that have lost children. And, and you know, th- a few that have lost their only child, which is, is even more tragic than losing. I mean, it's always bad to lose a child. Losing one... And maybe you have two or three others, but if you lose your only child, then then the, you know there tends to be a going to God and saying, "Why'd you do this to me?" And I, I just don't have that uh, that feeling. And I also notice another thing that time is going by so quickly yeah. as we've gotten older that um, you're either going to appreciate this opportunity to live, or you're going to just lose it tomorrow. It's gone. So that tends to also keep people in the now, right? In the now. The other thing is, is I want to live with a gratitude toward God, toward people, just toward things that are going on, you know? I don't want to live in resentment, and I certainly don't want to live in anger. And that's been a real challenge for me to push the anger away of, uh, of people. Um, let, me, let me cover this one thing uh, from Acts. The New Testament mocks the claims of magicians by describing their inability to deal with real spirits, the failed efforts of Simon the sorcerer, remember that in Acts 8, 9 through 24, and the sons of Sceva in Acts 19, 14 through 16 to, to obtain apostolic authority illustrates the point of, the, of that, that the miracles of the New Testament had nothing to do with ancient magic. A lot of people try to fool you and say, oh, Jesus was just a sorcerer. No, that's direct God power. And that's the same power given to us, you know, given to us as the Holy Spirit, given to us as the direct power that makes any one of us the power of a billion sons. We just, what we do is we forget that connection when we're sad, upset, when things happen, but we need to remember it, i.e. faith, so that we can then pray against it pray ourselves into the grace of God. Like right now, I'd say definitely in the grace of God, in a good spot, in a good spiritual position, having God first and just, just, I'm just aligned at the moment. That's not always true on the Zephyr report. Sometimes I'm upset. I'm some mad. I'm, I'm struggling. I've, I've been various states of mind, you know, while uh, here and delivering various talks. I decided not to put on a face, 
but to just be whatever. And people get on me. They go, how can you be so uh, bitter and angry and this and that? And it's, I'm not. I'm not really any of those things. My normal state is, is joyous and free-flowing and very, you know, creative and childlike and, you know, uh, just uh, interested in all kinds of things and, you know, just like, uh, like a, in, a, in a sense, like a child, but, uh, but not. But, uh, you know, obviously having some worldly wisdom from, from pain and, and, you know, events that have happened and they tend to wise you up. But uh, that's how I tend to be. I don't tend to be depressed. It's not my normal way traumatized i've always had the ability though when there's something going on if there's some kind of stalking traumatizing spell conjuring demonic activity any kind of thing like that i tend to be able to articulate uh to use language creatively to be able to describe something that people don't talk about the the reason they don't talk about it is because they can't see it they're a part of the only time they ever actually know they're part of something else that is when they see a lamb of God, you know, an innocent one that's not connected to their to their collective, then they realize they're in trouble, and they get mad not at themselves but at that person that's meaning them no harm, and they tend to bully that person. That's stalking, and yes, they do it. But what does that say about them? That they're part of that collective. Their souls are not their own. Demons operate them, and when they operate in a hive, and they're targeting somebody they they tend to come out of the woodwork everywhere because that same demon is orchestrating the entire thing absolutely i know that that people want a different explanation they want a mechanical explanation um and they want you know the government to stop stalking and all this stuff and directed energy weapons and i would add to that chemtrails directed energy poisons gmos you know quite a 5g coming up yeah a long list of demonic things but they're all demonic things. The people behind all those programs are demonically possessed, and they intend to hurt humanity. Well, don't have people, don't have a system. Well, is that the sun reflecting off that object in the air? I guess so. Wow. Well, I don't search the skies that much. I just saw an object out there. I think it's probably a plane that the sun was just hitting it. But it was real bright, you know. It was real bright. It was in the air for a minute, and Trish is taking a look at it. I, 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 it disappeared. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if signs and wonders started coming in at this point because, you know, the world, you may have heard, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go into a little bit of geopolitics here just to just set this up. Yeah. Okay. We got into a uh, a near World War III mistake the other day um, when the Russians sunk an American sub in Alaskan, uh, Alaskan waters, <clears throat> in other words, not in Russian waters, and uh, there was emergency meetings uh, in D.C. and, you know, the Pentagon and in and, uh, and the Kremlin um, because they got into it. It looked, it looked to some people like they were somebody's trying to start a war, you know, and have this, this incident. Um, you know, there are all kinds of people that want to start a war. They, they know. For example, had you, had you gotten, say, Hillary Clinton in, and they they're screaming for Hillary because you know they obviously want to die at some at some level within because we would all be dead right now because we would have gone to nuclear war with Russia that was the plan and she stated that it's not anything hidden or secret or conspiratorial but because people are possessed and unable to see the truth and unable to receive information even if you tell them they don't there are many of them that would like to re not just litigate the presidency but put you know put her in and they feel very good about getting nuked they feel very good about dying they they want to die but that desire is buried you know and, and may I put it more clearly they are programmed to want death and then they're layered with programming that says it's it wouldn't be that 
but you know she had represented that side of things she she's really a globalist it's not a, a left or right thing there's there's people on say republican side like uh what's that guy bolton he's in the same camp as hillary they both want to have a total wall-to-wall nuclear war which would you know because it's all about depopulation the plans within plans these people have and depopulation is about destroying humanity who wants to destroy humanity what force out there, right? Because they're all possessed, because they are all, all practitioners of black magic, adrenochrome, murders, killing children, um, you, know, uh, you know, raping, human trafficking. They're involved in all that. You know, there's a big, big portion of the military industrial complex involved in that. Then there's a big portion that isn't, and they're fighting. They're fighting it out. But, um, you you know they had to probably get on the phone and discuss you know what uh, what the consequences would be of sinking the sub right and killing the the people on board and uh, try to stand down and have cooler heads prevail. I mean this is the, what I'm I'm not feeling a danger right now of a conflagration with nuclear war, but it's it's out there like it never has been before. I can guarantee you this. The people that would that that are you know voting with the globalist or that are they're wanting to oust over really it's about overturning America and all that you know just ending it uh, will be subject if they get their way to a nuclear war. Uh, uh, there there is no reason for them to have children because they're all going to be killed anyway. Because that's the plan: the depopulation of the earth. They want to quickly do it, get it down to size, and then you know, get back involved in it and sort of regulate it down and, you know, start moving people into, into prefab cities and, you know, start start getting their 20, you know, their 20, 30 objectives uh, in place, you know, over the next few years. And um, it involves the, the death of many, many people. That's what's really up. That's what's uh, the, 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 the politicians, I think, are aware of that. Um, because they've all sold out to global interests and they are totalitarians, you know, they're not, um, they're not Americans, but there's a good deal of little people here, tiny people that would die, but they're too stupid or too programmed or too something to actually figure out what the actual plan is. It's really, it's really the people that want to live versus the people that want to die. And when I say want to die, that's not on the tip of their lips or anything. It's not right there. But it's, it's within them. They want to trust people that will kill them and go ahead and die. And they want everyone else to, too. But that's a subject. They have been subjected to programming and demonic spirits. It's the demons that want humans to die. And if you're possessed, then you're going to want to die yourself to ple- as part of the collective, the part of the mind control that you would, you would put people in power that would uh, tend to go to a nuclear war. And that's what we're really fighting right now. You know, I'm, I don't want to make it a political issue because it's really a survival issue of humanity. Uh, the way they have behaved on, on Trump and the, you know, the, the things that have happened and the things they've done in the news media and all that has, has shown the conspiracy wide open to everybody so that people are without excuse. So the next step would be some kind of violence. Now, I didn't want to really focus on that because I know a lot of people are going to be upset with the violence. I know people are going to be upset with either domestic, you know, civil war type violence or and, you know, some kind of international incident that, you know, they'll blame somebody that, you know, have a scapegoat. But I think people are very, um, people haven't really done the thinking that, um, you know, if they die, what, what then, what next? And the answer is, well, there is no next here, but what, when, they, when you die, what next is you're going to stand before God. That's just, it's just you know, the word says that. That's just the way it's going to be. You know, there are consequences. And um, if you serve a death cult your whole life, which the normal conformity, conformianity of the world is a death cult. Then, of course, the consequences would be, you know, what do you expect? If you serve life, the light, the truth, 
uh, then consequences would be possibly favorable. But again, you know, it's a choice that people make. And, um, you know, I, I honor people's free will. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't like a lot of things I see, you know, like, like post-birth abortion and, you know, sexualizing children, you know, abusing children because I was abused too. And that's a terrible, terrible abuse. They don't, you know, realize that when you sexualize a child, you're abusing them. And uh, they say it's perfectly normal and happy and healthy. Well, a lot of people, they get sexualized. They do okay. But many commit suicide. And uh, our voices are squelched on this issue. I think children should grow up and use their own free will to choose whatever kind of path they're going to have and sex and partners and different things, not have it forced upon them and then put the mind control on it so that those children grow up never knowing who they are, not knowing where they are, but just being compliant. All because these older people are obsessed with sex because they're demon possessed and that's all they think about. And and they just want children to be broken down so there are no barriers. You know, it's all about violation of innocence. Otherwise, you know, it's not about sex like pleasure. It's about domination and control. Mind control, domination, and submission. That's what it's always about. That's why you, that's why these people attack innocence. And then once a child is wrecked, right? Once they become hardwired to be like, you know, self destructive, let's say you know, to, 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 to allow themselves to be abused never ends. The only thing they can do then is perhaps go celibate or something to, to be able to stop those desires from actually killing them. So many deaths here, you know, that are, go unreported. I mean, it, a tremendous amount of death from things like that. But I, and I know the whole story, having, you know, been a child and been an adult and seen what people do. I know what they do. And I know why they do it. Because they're out of control, because their parents did it to them. I understand the whole idea of generational abuse. I understand these networks of generational child abuse. They are generational and to them, it's a very matter-of-fact thing. It's time to break the children in. Okay, get the adults in the room and sit back against the back wall and do your knitting. And it's actually a satanic ritual to get them involved at, you know, four years old, five years old, six years old. So that they'll grow up and become movers and shakers in the world. And, you know, the, the, a preponderance of them commit suicide and have a terrible time or wind up in jail or mental hospitals or something like that. And then a few of them get possessed with, say, the, they, they, they're so split at that age that they are compliant and successful because they're split, because they're not really who they started off being. They're a program. And what their purpose is, is their purpose is to program others to perpetuate the same evil not to succeed in the field of their endeavor, but to influence people around that field. And, of course, to keep their mouth shut. Keeping the mouth shut is really a big deal with them. They don't want humanity to know what's up here. They don't want humanity to figure out what it is. They don't want humanity to figure out what the situation is here. Because the only way they can actually get it done is in darkness and ignorance. So if people know why they were born, that they're a commodity, legally owned by the devil at that point, to be, to be uh, surprise attacked of uh, their innocence and traumatized and split... So they become compliant members of society down the road. And that's why so many of them are against talking philosophy or, you know, they get out of, you know, they, they're not interested in any of those subjects of philosophy, humanities, great literature, they're pretty much getting rid of all that at this point because they need a cultural vacuum 
in order to really, really, really ramp the evil up. And the next step of evil, of course, is the post-human world, which will be, uh, you know, a robotic, bionic, you know, the robots take over. And that's, you know, the Terminator. But that's basically what they're setting up. A authoritarian, totalitarian, scientific dictatorship to where science and technology is the final authority and people are simply clones of clones that do what they're told. And that is basically it. And the people that are trying to overthrow, say, America and all their protesting and all that, there's quite a few of them, 40-some-odd, 45%, I think, of the people here want America to be gone. And um, if why is America important? Well, because it's kind of a last bastion of free thinking and people that have a chance to actually be, uh, you know, like what we're talking about here. This program would not be allowed. Um, you know, I, I know the ones getting banned now, if, the, if, you, if you attack AOC or you do something political or whatever, they get banned now. But what they're really afraid of is this kind of talk, this existential talk about what this is. And so they put out all kinds of shills to give you all kinds of complex theories on what it is and to obfuscate the matter so that people cannot... uh, What it is is very simple. Any child could comprehend it. And if it gets more complicated than that, then they're not telling the truth. And, you know, I... um, Those of you who will be casting out demons... The person has to want not just to have the demon cast out, but to want to change and repent and follow instead of, you know, the devil, the world, their, 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 their tea club, their, uh, their, their PTA, their church. They got to be willing to follow God. And if they're not willing to do that, if they're not yearning to do that, if that's not the decision they made, then you cannot cast out any demons. No, absolutely forbidden. They will then go on suffering, but there's nothing you can do about it. If you don't want to see the suffering, then back off. But that person that is doing the suffering, they know. They don't want to give the demon up because it's some kind of comfort thing or they're afraid of being naked and alone if they don't have it or something like that. Whatever it is, it's, it's, it's obviously incorrect thinking, but there's nothing you can do to correct that if they want to stay in that situation. Most of them want to stay in that situation and have the demon be nice to them so they can have a good time. But that's not the goal of the demons. The, the, you know, it gets into harvest time and they, they, they're harvesting souls. They're going to take that person down. They're going to give them all kinds of diseases. Take them out. Take them out before he can repent. Absolutely. That's the, that's the, that's the binary situation. Nothing else happening here, baby. Well, you know, the odd thing is, you know, the the odds and and having flesh that wants to do any old thing, wants to murder, to sex, to uh, lie, steal, anything can get away with. The flesh is just like that, right? And only when you understand that it's not about that, that that's a very base thing. And, of course, that ties in with the demonic realm as well. Anybody that, that, that goes down that path is, you know, under demonic control, under robotic control, and has no life of their own. They think they do. They say, oh, how nice it is in my new mansion. But, I mean, it's not theirs. It's, it's, nothing is ours here. We're just renting the space, renting the time. It's God's bat, God's ball. We can play games like we earned it. Oh, we earned it. We, I, we, I've worked hard and I earned it. I am God, and I earned it. Uh, eh, A fool's paradise, my friends, a fool's paradise. Think that way long enough, and boy, then you really can't understand cancer, can you? I was just walking along, and all of a sudden, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I'm a nice guy, I just... Yeah, well, when we make it personal with God... Why did you take my daughter? I didn't, it was my only child. I mean, come on, man. Why didn't I do that? Because that's the road to demonization, to ruination. 
So I decided one is enough. We don't need two. But to get to that thought, to understand that particular um, pattern of thought, one would have to know something about what's going on here. And not that many people do. I always wondered, you know, why they don't just put their rituals in the, you know, I mean, you can imagine the rituals, you know, getting around, you know, killing people, doing things, you know, orgies and buggering children and all the sorts of nefarious things. I guess it's because they're also, you know, embarrassed for how far they've gone down that road and what they're willing to do to keep power. You guys, it's not your power. It's not your life. It's not your thoughts. You haven't lived one day your whole life since adolescence. You're basically dead. What, 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 what could you possibly want now? And who cares what you want? We see you. We see what you become, what you are. A spirit of death. A spirit of, of, of nothing. A spirit of hollow. A spirit of non-existence. So you want to make sure that, you know, people that you can influence are as miserable as possible while giving to your favorite charity. I know you. You want to be seen as charitable to society and then you torture everyone around you. I understand it. But you're not alive. You're not living to the extent that you can have the debate with yourself because there is no yourself of what this is and what choice to make and whether this or whether that. Those days are gone. Or as Malachi Martin said, they just... They just sort of slouch into uh, Neverland. They kind of just slouch into death, into retirement and death. They just kind of, you know, all those desires to understand anything go away. When you're dead, you don't care. You're just dead ahead of time. You're not physically dead, but you're spiritually dead. And twice dead. When you actually die, I'll be three times dead. Why do they do it? Well, mostly because I can't say because they can't figure it out because God gives us uh, every single person on earth gets to know this situation at some level. You know, they might not be able to talk about it with their neighbor. I'm not no, I'm not contradicting myself. I mean, know it in a what I mean is not on an intellectual level or a speaking level, but somehow as a, and as, as a kind of intuition level. Because God puts that within all souls that are born. You know, there's, there, there's knowledge that you're going, you feel when you're going the wrong way. There's a, there's a check. A lot of people just ignore it because they're told to ignore it. And then, you know, can that person come back who's 99 years old and just, you know, t- tipping toward, uh, you know, basically, I guess, what would be like a uh, petrified, a petrified rock. Uh, if there's any kind of spirit in that person to, to, to figure out that, oh my God, I made a mistake, please take me back, Lord, of course. If that man could not, or woman or whatever, usually a man in that, I was thinking, but could be a woman too. If that old man or that old woman could repent, it couldn't repent, then I couldn't repent. I couldn't go with God. I went with God when my Basically, I was being really messed with, with you know, by all the witches and Satanists. They were just piling on, and I didn't think I was going to live much longer. But I just, I just felt so beyond any kind of solution that I just cried out to God. I said, "Father, are you there?" I said these words, "Father, are you there?" And that began the whole journey back in, you know, I guess this is about 1999. I mean, I've always been like no, no, knowing God, and but it's, it was a laissez-faire kind of thing, you know, on again, off again, you know, the sort of, uh, uh, you know, pretty much lukewarm. As soon as things start going good, I'm like, well, it's all about me now. And 
I'd always get confused about thinking about the future, though, because I'd say, they'd say, well, what do you want? It's like, and I couldn't think of anything. Do I want a big award on a wall? Mom to go, hey, you finally did something. Don't friends to say, hey, well, that was great. No, that was beaten out of me early on. So I guess my, the goal was, I'm being tortured, Lord. Everything is a mess. I've lived in denial. I guess the Lord was saying, you're very damaged. You've been hurt real bad. You, 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 you're in denial. You don't, you, you're living a lie. You don't think you've been hurt. You don't remember all those things. You block them out. You've, 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 you've let them, you know, you're, 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 you're basically a one click away from real death. There is no real hope for you. You're so battered that you probably won't be able to, to heal. But, oh, well, come along because this is the only chance you're going to get. But I had to put up with seeing my own traumas and that weren't dealt with. The Lord showed me all that. I'm going, oh, my God. How does anybody survive? The answer is you start walking with the Lord little by little. There was healing. But, I mean, there's a lot of damage. I mean, you know, the, the, you, you hear all these um, stories about, you know, big cities and, you know, glamorous lifestyles in Los Angeles and New York. And, you know, you hear about all these successes and you see people on TV. It's all an illusion, my friends. It's all, it, it basically isn't real. None of it is real. And um, you, you learn that at an early age when it's when you you know when when you know when you're trying to heal, you realize that the whole point of your youth is to cover up the abuses that you had, knowing that everybody abuses everybody, so you're cool with it, and you know you're willing to become an abuser yourself. That's basically the contract, the social contract, is that everybody covers everything up. And the the you know now we get to the point of of potential destruction of humanity through nuclear war. It's like yeah, well, if you keep going down this life of self-aggrandizement, vanity, selfishness, um, you know, justifying abuse or being an abuser, justifying all your evil, not repenting for sin and all that, it's going to lead toward mass destruction. If you're going to go toward the light, and that would be. You know, Christ-like, you know, doing for others, you know, putting others, you know, before you, you know, not being completely selfish about things, but wanting the best for people. You know, that, that spirit of Christ, you know, that spirit of, of you know, everyone knows what it is around uh, when they finally give up themselves. They go, wow, that really felt good. It's like, yeah, that feels good. It, it, it's counterintuitive. Most people grab onto things and they hold them for dear life. It's like, Dude, you're going to die anyway. You're not going to be able to take it with you. And none of those plaques on the wall, you know, back, you know, hands on the back, uh, good job and all that, none of that matters. All that really matters is that where you are with God in that last day. It, it, the rest of it, what you did here, what you didn't do, it really, you know, I mean, unless you just did pure evil, and hurt innocent people, and, and, you know, you got depraved like a lot of these elite secret societies and stuff are completely depraved. They convince each other to go further and further with their depravity. Uh, I would say that they've made a pact with the devil. They intend to go to hell, and that's exactly what's going to happen to them. I, I, you've heard this before. I remember asking, when I was a lot younger, I asked my mother about, oh, people I used to know, you know, before I got... Uh, sent away and um she goes never mind they've all gone to the devil all all <laughs> yes well eventually i learned it was all i mean it was all the whole world but again the problem is that you're not the one any longer doing the living you're just part of a program and so therefore you're already dead let's go ahead and live the rebellious thing is to repent and just go with God. You know, the, 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 it's a little bit counterintuitive because people say, well, I got flesh, I want to gratify it. Well, you know, that's the one thing that you, you, you've, 
you, you'd best give up. But there, like everything else, there's a line. I mean, was did uh, you know? There's David. There's Solomon. There's various people that had their lives, and they they had their. I mean, I, I to me, living in the present time is a gratifying of flesh in the sense that I'm I feel a certain happiness being in this present time with you rather than looking ahead or behind. I feel like right in this zone we're in right now, there's like this this joy and there's this appreciation, gratitude, uh praise of God, you know, just basically like thank you for putting me in this position. And I like to stay in that position. I, I don't always. A lot of times I get angry. I hear the te- television. I yell at the TV. Or when I when I see I see things so clearly now. You know, either politically or everything seems so stark. You know, kind of black and white. So you know that that's a good thing too. No, no real shade. I'm funny with they have these like little S and M shows called Fifty Shades of Grey, and it's just like. Same old, same old, dude. Same old spirit, same old world, same old thing. Nothing new under the sun. And, uh, you know, it's just gradations of how far one goes to break taboos because it's so pleasurable that eventually it has to lead to death. (laughs) I was really confused. When, When we were kids, we went to see some slasher thing, my friend and I. And everybody in the theater had raincoats on. And they started going at it whenever there was like someone getting their throat cut or their arm cut off or, you know, chainsawed or anything like that. They, oh, they, they'd, they could no longer get off on porno or sex. It had to be that. And then I'm, I'm sure there's another level beyond that that I, I don't know of, but that was an eye opener. We were like maybe eight, nine years old, 10. And it was like, God, I mean, that, and those were just average people off the street, not any secret society or anything, which you'd imagine they're all into that stuff. And it's, and and, and don't you, well, you start with a taboo, you know, you go, oh, it's exciting. I think I'll tie you up. You know what I mean? And then eventually I think I'll cut your throat. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just going to go there. Sex and death. They, they go hand in hand. It's the flesh. It's it's just we are a depraved people, and and we need to find a way out of that out of that situation. Unfortunately, there is one. Well, you know, I was going to write a story, um, and I'm only going to write it if it's going to become something that that can be consumed by you guys out there. You know, one one form or another, but. I was thinking about, hey, and I'm hoping my Marine friends listen up. I had in mind this Marine coming back from, like, Afghanistan and, you know, different, uh, some kind of, you know, thing either over there or somewhere in the world. And I'm just going to give you a little tidbit. And it's all being motivated because I'm really angry about leaving a baby on a table, you know what I mean, who could be viable, you know, third trimester abortion, and they leave the baby on the table, and then and instead of reviving it, you know, if the baby survives, they let it die, and then they, sometimes they take the baby and play with it like a doll and make a joke out of it. It, it's, it's, it makes me so sick. Uh, he comes home, and he's in the hospital, and then, you know, has a visit from his w- wife, and She's leaving him. She's left him already. And she's at the third trimester. And she tells him while he's in the hospital, by the way, she's going to abort the baby. And he goes insane. Just insane. Okay, so that's my basic... I won't go into any more that I figured out, but that's where I kind of begin with it. And I just... uh, It, it it just makes me sick to think about a situation like that. But I heard about <clears throat> more than one where the 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 wife leaves the uh, the guy in service. He comes home, and she's already aborted the baby. That's really more of the stories I've heard. She's aborted the baby that he's looking forward to, 
uh, rejected him. The society hates the veterans. And what would this guy do? What if we had one guy that goes off? Well, if he's a Marine, <laughs> what's he good at? He's good at something called a rifle. Oh, yes. A Marine and his rifle. And basically uh, a boy and his gun, you know. So that's uh, kind of my something I've been thinking about. And, and I know it's a real simple story and everything, but... It's so plausible, and people get so mad over the issue. Can you imagine coming home and you, 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 your wife is, you know, looking very full with the pregnancy, and she goes, I'm going to abort that, and, and screw you, and I'm with so-and-so, and uh, I'm just, I don't want to be burdened with this. I'm going to just do my own thing. And I don't want to be around a veteran because, you know, veterans are, you know, scorned in our society, and... You probably have PTSD and you're going to go need to get on Prozac or something. So I'm, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I've, I've got Joe over here and he's a, he's a great guy and he really loves me and he doesn't go away for nine months at a time. And, uh, you know, F you. And in this case, this Marine, he doesn't, yeah, he's a human being. And it, he snaps. How many of you might snap if you were in that situation? Would you snap? Well, you know, see, the problem with a controversial topic like that is that if I continue writing it or, you know, exploring it and all the different manifestations and places a story like that could go, uh, it it will definitely polarize the world, but I may never be able to write anything again. I mean, it just may be, from that point forward, unpublishable. You know, that late term abortion is a sacred right, right? If you're if you're if you're demonically possessed, if you're not demonically possessed, you wouldn't want a late-term abortion, and especially they say, well, the child's going to be deformed, the child's going to have a problem. Still, the natural instinct of a mother is to, to, to give birth and to do the best she can in that situation. It's it, The idea of infanticide and then calling it abortion so it's cool and obsessing on the third trimester. When did we ever obsess on the third trimester of anything? We never did. We do now. And seeing abortion doctors, you know, after the abortion, play with the fetuses like dolls or make puppets out of them, throw them around the room. You know, it. it we've seen those videos. It, it, it's, it, 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 it's so dehumanizing and so, so terrible that, you know, it, it, it does hearken, you know, monsters of, of evil like the Nazis and the death camps and, and torture and things like that. I mean, it's, it's just such a terrible thing. And I've, I've never my whole life been that political about abortion. I sort of look the other way like a lot of people. You know, I mean, there's so many problems in the world. And, you know, and then as, they, as you start focusing on that third trimester, I mean, here in New Mexico, the number one thing that the legislature and the governor wants is late-term abortion. And they want to make us all pay for it. And that's, that's their goal, to make sure that, that it's, it's pu very public knowledge that, that late-term abortion is perfectly okay in 50 states, but especially in New Mexico, that that's the number one platform of the governor here, uh, is late-term abortion. After that comes open borders and, you know, and, and sanctuary cities and all that. But number one is that late-term abortion. I ask myself, why would anyone have that as their number one thing they're running on? And of course, she got easily elected running on that platform. I guess that's it. That's it. Uh, if you said abortion, that abortion would be unfettered, we're going to make even people that believe that it's killing a child, we're going to make them pay taxes that pay for those abortions. We're going to force them to pay for it, i.e. consent to it under the living God, so that they are damned. Almost as if they know the spiritual implication. So they double down on it and call it third trimester and make sure that people know they're paying for 
viable babies to be extinguished on the table after being pulled out of the womb. And it, it's when you see the people marching. Another thing I saw yesterday, which I've never seen before in my life, and you know, you're just going to have to help me out here. I saw the political march of Democrats, of the Democratic hopefuls. And never before in my life, Republican or Democrat, have I ever seen no American flag on the July 4th. Not one. The flag was banned uh, over the all the candidates and their little march and parade, whatever they were doing in Iowa or wherever they were. The flag was gone. And then they were like criticizing Trump for, um, you know, for uh, whatever he was doing yesterday, which was basically talking about the military and the, the sacrifices they've made for, uh, for people. And, and he was honoring that. Well, that was his main thing. But they accused him of throwing some kind of party for himself or what, all these things that were all lies. That, that wasn't true. I may not be, I may have a lot of criticism of Trump, but I mean, it's certainly, I don't feel I need to lie about him. But not one flag on July 4th. I didn't see one in the parades. I didn't see any anywhere. And I thought, you know, I know that uh, the, the DNC voted God out of the party. I mean, I know that. That happened. But now flag. And then, uh, then I think they're going to start taking down all the monuments, the, uh, the Democrats, all the monuments everywhere. But, okay, the only reason they don't want you to have a flag is so that you don't have any, you won't fight for your country. I mean, so you won't try to have a country that you'll forget about it. And uh, it's really multi-trillionaire interests that want to, you know, take over the globe with a technocratic totalitarian society actually of robots in the future after the extinguishment of humanity. Uh, don't you understand that, that it's, it's either that or, you know, fight for your country, for your sovereignty? Don't you see that there's a binary clause there that if you give in to the global interest, you will become extinct, and so are your children. And so, you know, maybe fight for them. I mean, it's not, not left or right anymore. It's not Republican, Democrat. It's, it's not, you know, libertarian, constitutionalist, patriot versus, you know, who are really white supremacists versus these wonderful people that, um, that want to overthrow your country and, and take everything you have. These are the Bolsheviks from the path. They've always been around under different names. They're the golden calf worshipers. You know, they're the, they're the, uh, the spirit conjurers. They're the people that are, you know, possessed and they want everyone else to be possessed. Anyway, they're the godless, whatever, whatever you want to call them. They, they've been around in various forms and various times throughout, throughout all history. And they're threatening to, they, they want the, sure, they want a nuclear war. They, they want... You know, they're programmed to self-annihilate. My question would be for the public, and the news media is right with them. I mean, they're in the same boat. Why would anybody want to align with death cults, ancient Babylonian death cults, and, 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 you know, and these various other kinds of doomsday cults? Why wouldn't people want to live? Even people that are like young, they're going to look at the fireworks, they're going to the dances, they're going to the Vegas to hear their favorite DJ, and they're going to the... They have all these things they want to do and having fun, right, when you're young. Why wouldn't they want to live? The answer is because they're, they're programmed, you know, to consume and then, and then vote a certain way and do a certain thing. And they're, they're falling in line and doing it. And they're also uneducated at this point. And it's all being done under Trump. But it seems Trump has no power to correct it, you know, especially the child abuse in schools. So I don't know. I, you know, it, it looks to me like we're, to me, it looks like we're heading off the cliff and there's nothing, nothing that's going to really, and it's, may I, may I just say it, that if people are in love with death, then 
you know, and, and you know, uh, negation of the human spirit, negation of God, negation of, 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 uh, of, of anything, that, negation of anyone over 30, <laughs> you know what I mean? Negation of everything, country, borders, God, this, that, and, and, and all they want to do is say, take drugs and fornicate, let's say. <laughs> like dogs. I, you know, I look at that and I think, so what's next? <laughs> you know? What matters to people? Anyway, with this Marine, I've, he's probably going to, you know, with that momentary lapse of reason, he's probably going to start t- picking off the, uh, you know, he's not going to blame his wife because he's a good guy. He's not going to become a psycho with a wife and the new and the new boyfriend, the new boy toy. But what will he do as he tries to break into the room where they're performing the abortion, hitting the you know, and he gets hauled off in chains, knowing that his baby was just ripped from life? What do you think a man like that would do? Just a good boy, you know, good American, basic, affable, intelligent human who snaps, who's pushed to the brink at his son's murder. Well, let me, let me just put it this way. Uh, there's probably no level of violence that this guy may, in, 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 under a temporary lapse of reason would not commit. But I think one of the things that he probably didn't figure is that the public would cheer him on. Copycats could start up. I'm going to just leave it right there. I might write it up. I don't know. I'm, you know, it'd, it'd be, you know, you'd, 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 you know, you have to think about being true to your calling. Yes. There was no submarine sunk. I would think that. All right. The reports. Okay, so you know, consider the source. There's not just Al Turner. There's, you know, there's other people saying there's other sources too, from the FBI and so forth. But, you know, if if it's not true, then then great, you know. But uh, I think think people should be aware that there are hawks out there that would like us to get into a war. Okay, and that an incident like that could happen very, very plausibly. And maybe someone should do a movie about that. Oh, oh, we have had Hunt for Red October and things, but I mean, just to show how much of of a hair trigger we're on. We're on a hair trigger right now. So whether the incident is true or partial, I know it's, it's, most of these rumors, it's like partially true uh, to a certain extent that obviously there were tensions that caused people to, to drop everything and go back to D.C., go to the Kremlin, you know, obviously involved Russia and the United States. We know something happened that way because we've seen the news articles. What we don't know are the details regarding this. And you'll never know. All that's going to be kept top secret, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, to me, it really doesn't matter how literally true it is. It just matters that tensions are that high. And again, would this be happening if the spirit of America wasn't completely overrun with demons? We're overrun here. I, I don't see any, you know, any any cohesiveness in our society. I see half the people wanting to overthrow the country, the other half wanting to be Americans. Or, you know, America it's really not left or right or, you know, even it's it, it is good and evil, but it just seems like the Americans have to band together to, to off throw this cancer called, you know, the invaders who are within that want to overthrow the country. Meaning they want to overthrow the laws and the, you know, 
whatever made the country. They want to undo it. And that's the spirit that I see. It's also an antichrist spirit. They want to uh, outlaw Jesus, the Bible, you know, tear down statues, you know, just tear it up and instead replace education with, you know, uh, sexual acts. You know, probably they could make some porn films out of it and, you know, make the public, uh, you know, force the public to uh, watch. I don't think there's any end to the depravity at this point, but it's right at the door. And if it isn't fought off, then America would cease to exist. Well, the Chinese would love that. The Russians, I don't think they would love it. I think they would love it more if we were, you know, a God-fearing nation. But this force, this anti-Christ, anti-God force, is about half the country and many young people, and they want to overthrow it all. They want to replace it with a totalitarian. I keep I, I keep to repeat myself over and over. A totalitarian regime. No thought, no choice. You know, forced castration, forced mind control, forced whatever. After depopulating a good portion of the world. You know, really, humanity is only good for scientific experimentation after that. A post-human world. And they're getting the young people to rise up to overthrow countries and sovereignties and, and histories and everything so they can accomplish that very thing. And they're throwing trillions of dollars into it. And we are the targets. That's why I say left, right, it doesn't matter. What matters is do we band together to survive? Do we start talking to each other? Do we, do we, do we you know, pray over one another? Do we start trying to find some, you know, way of peace so that we can stand up against a cancerous threat or do we get overcome? If we're going to be overcome, it'll be in the next five years. It will become obvious that we're, that we're conquered. And then, oh my God, you know, uh, that that uh, that that movie. What was it? Demolition Man. Uh, you know, from from the eighties. I mean, that that would it would literally be even more oppressive than that, to the level of absurdity. If you say the wrong word, they come to your house and haul you off. You know, I mean, it's 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 almost to that level now. Do we want it to go to that level? It gives me lots of stories to write. I mean, I, I just horrific things are in my mind. I'm so angry, you know, I'm just, and that anger I have to, to, to vent in some positive way and it's either going to be uh, some expression, but the pen, you know, the pen is mightier than the sword. I think if people could see, you know, we might just start off with a scene of people playing with a fetus, batting it around the room, seeing if its head pops off. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> You know, look, he's screaming. It's not dead yet. Oh, cool. You know, I can get really nasty, really nasty, and I will. There's no end to what I'll do. I will horrify any reader because I am not going to sit here and take this lying down of, of just being a party to murder in my own state, that that's my state tax dollars are going to murder. I, I don't want to murder children. I told you in the very beginning, uh, the objection I had to Satanism and to the witchcraft and sex magic and all that, it all had to do, or whatever it is, whatever they do, you know, it's mainly murder. <laughs> but, you know, to, to, the, to the cult, to the, to, the, to the induction, is I didn't want to murder anyone. Or look the other way on it or, or set up, you know, a snare of evil trying to take someone down and then laugh at it. I didn't want to be involved in that bullying or targeting or gaslighting or doing any of those things that they do. The main gaslighting I had as a teenager was from Satanists that were just basically, you know, trying to scare me, taunt me. And then they finally just uh, pushed me into a corner. I mean, they completely ruined my life, actually. They ruined my life. They ruined everything. So, you know, haven't really had a, a life like other people, but that's been good 
because it's helped me to see what this situation is here on the earth, you know, to really understand what's going on. Most people, they die not even having a clue what they, what they were, you know, trying to live in. You're, you're trying to live in a place that's not meant for you to live. The world is not meant for people to live in. It's meant for people to make a decision. You know, and that's basically it. Well, okay. I really enjoyed talking to you. I, I, I mean, I feel like we're having a, even though I'm talking, I feel like it's a kind of a two-way conversation. I do appreciate all the good thoughts and wishes and everything about Francesca. And I just refuse to let her die. Okay. I refuse to let her memory die. I refuse to turn away. I refuse to put it in a box. I refuse to have a step up or lift. I, you know, I have a step up, but I refuse to hide my emotions in public. I refuse to not keep her as part of my life. I refuse to look the other way like uh, Rick Warren did when his son uh, shot himself. I refuse to be like that because it's more painful to do what I do. That doesn't mean that uh, I should take an alternative route because it's less painful. It's more painful, but it's more beautiful, meaning uh, I also have appreciation and, and love that I feel that I don't feel if I just put someone in a corner somewhere and lock them up and forget about it. That was painful. Let's not go back there again. I'm not going to do it. You know, I do, do I wish she wasn't as headstrong and I could have gotten through to her? Wish she would have reached out? Yeah, obviously, I'm a little mad at that. Sure. Uh, you know, nothing is perfect. But, you know, I, I cherish the memory. I cherish her, her in my life. I cherish... The day of her birth, I was there. And, uh, you know, this was a very, very, very wanted child. And so God took her, you know, she's with the Lord. Okay, I know that. I know her heart. That's where she belonged. That's where she is. And thank God she's not suffering anymore. But... No, I, I don't recommend anybody take their, you know, dead child, even if it was especially an only child, and then that's kind of it for you, you know. I That's no measure of me either. You know, it's like, oh, God's punishing you. You have no children. It's like, no, it's not a punishment. Many, many people, uh, you know, the, have go, come and gone in the Bible, heroes of the Bible who had no uh, children, and it's, it's, it's not a curse at all. I mean, I know the Bible talks about having more children, like Job means, you know, you're really blessed and less children you're not. Well, I never set out to have children. I felt I was too screwed up to have children. You know, I was hurting. I was traumatized. I was, you know, split in a million directions. I, I couldn't, you know, they, 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 they did a good job taking all, they took all that away from me. It's amazing we even had a child. Anyway having a child with your handler. <laughs> it's, but, you know, the point is, is uh, no, that was a beautiful child. That was a beautiful soul. And, uh, you know, I know that I'll see her again. So, you know, no, I'm not going to be sad right now in this moment. There's been plenty of tears. There's been buckets. But there's also been laughter and, you know, appreciation and enjoyment looking back on certain times. And, you know, when we get ready to die, all we're going to have are our memories, folks. When we're ready to die and take our last breath, all we have are, that, are those memories. We have nothing new coming up. It's just memories. Memories. And when I see people, young people, I realize they have a lot of time left, you know. And uh, time doesn't go as fast as it goes for us. As you, as you get older, it goes faster. You start catching up with dog years eventually. So, um, so when I'm around young people, I mean, it's like it's cool. They worry about things, you know, that that we don't worry about because, again, things move so quickly that just don't, by the time you worry about it, it's already over. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then when you're younger, you worry, and it's out there, and it's there's literally nothing that can touch us if you be a child of God, and and. and there's just nothing that, that, that can, can, can really interrupt. And, and, and uh, there's worries out there, but there's just nothing that can really, 
you know, touch her. I suppose, you know, you know, evil, satanic, demonized people could say, okay, we're going to get rid of all, you know, Christian, white Christian males or something, set the world free. That's their delusion. And so if, if that's how you go, that's how you go. You're with God. It doesn't even matter. To live as Christ, to die as gain, it's win-win. Had I had a normal life, would I come to this? Probably not. If I had a normal life, I would have. That means I would have become a Satanist, and uh, I would have become demon possessed. And no, I, I wouldn't be around to really think that thought or have that conversation. There would be an approximation of Zeph, but not Zeph himself. Anyway, I had one more thing. Um, I had some other research I had done on this demon thing, but I, I got, you know, it, it's... Uh, um, one article that I've looked up that I pulled was called Why We Should Not Fear Satan and Demons. And the reason that you shouldn't fear Satan and demons is because you're, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, he has total authority over all those things. Game over. Done. Next. So I guess I'm, you know, I'm preaching the choir here, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, I, I decided to get out of here today because I, I felt like they were trying to keep me off the air, trying to make me feel bad that, you know, that that I was on the air. And, you know, we've done this for a long time, and, and it doesn't mean that if I'm gone till 20 on 20, let's say, if that happens, or if I'm here every day, it's, it's no difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> How do you live? Uh, to live is Christ, to die is gain. I think you live in Christ. And you don't worry about death. You don't worry about anything. So uh, I'll see you next time.